idea what practice number it is, but it's a lot. I mean, we're, we're starting to wind down. I know we're, uh, we're nine days away from what we have to do, and we have had these team meetings, you know, every day and talking about how it's getting closer and closer and what we have to do to get to continue to build this program. And I feel like we've made a lot of strides during camp this year, and I feel like we've gotten a lot better in a lot of areas. We still have our highs and lows on both sides of the ball. we got to work to get a little bit more consistent, but I really like the way that this team has, has come together. I like the way that they're working. I like the way that they're coming together and they're working to get better. But, you know, it's everybody's tired right now. Everybody's worn out and everybody's gone through 20-some days of camp. And uh, I think everybody's looking for a little bit of break this weekend after we have the scrimmage Friday and a practice on Saturday morning before we come back for Oklahoma week on Monday. What's the game plan for tomorrow's scrimmage? Um, we did kicking today. I mean, today's practice was in shells, about an hour of kicking game. And so we got all that out of the way tonight. So tomorrow we'll kind of go ones versus twos and twos versus ones. And we're probably going to get, I mean, predicated on how it goes, maybe somewhere between 20 or 30 live reps with our ones. And then the twos will kind of play the threes, and we'll go down and make sure that we get enough for to get the evaluations we have to get to formulate the depth charts to make sure that those are finals. We're going into the Oklahoma week. But it will be kind of offense versus defense or the ones will be playing together against the twos. What more are you looking for in this specific scrimmage as opposed to last Saturday? Um, last Saturday was a whole lot more about the individuals. It was a whole lot more about just trying to get him the ball to see how he's going to respond, trying to get him the ball. Let's make sure we put him at the point of attack, et cetera, those type of things, more individual. This one's probably a little bit more about where we are with some of the schemes and what we can execute and what we can do to be successful on both sides of the ball. Seems like kind of the theme all week has been that you, you know, didn't perform real well offensively and it improved throughout the week. What was it about Saturday that you did, weren't happy with and, and what have you liked this week that they've improved? I, I, I wasn't real happy with the consistency on offense. I mean, you look at it, they were, it was really, it wasn't a bad day. You know what I mean? We moved the ball, we made some plays, we threw a high completion percentage. The thing we didn't do is we weren't consistent enough. And I say consistency, we're, we're playing against ourselves. You know, if the corner falls down and we throw a touchdown pass, you don't get excited. You know, I mean, it's one of those, how do we execute with what we're trying to do? And I don't think we were very consistent as an offense. It's it seemed like we were, we'd have a guy run the wrong route, then we'd have a guy miss a block, then we'd have a quarterback make a bad read, then we'd have a drop. And when you have all those mistakes, it's almost like everybody go the wrong way on this play. Everybody make a mistake, go the wrong way, and then let's get it together and let's start to function as an offensive football team. And I didn't like, I didn't like our consistency uh, on, the on the field. I, I thought there were some good things. There were some really bright spots in that scrimmage, but I didn't like what we were doing consistently. You know, I, I said this earlier. I said when you have a good football team, uh, the one side of the ball doesn't win every night. And it goes back and forth. And you watch film and you make adjustments and you make changes. And I thought, I mean, I thought the defense had a really good scrimmage uh, last week. They did a really nice job. I thought on Wednesday the offense came out and really was clicking and hit on some big plays and made executed some plays way down the field and protected the quarterback. And, you know, then we came out here tonight. And I don't know, after an hour-long kicking scrimmage, we just didn't have the same same fire and energy that we did Wednesday night and the defense did and they came out and then they had their highs and that's where the give and take on a football team and the offense sharpens the defense and the defense sharpens the offense and that's kind of what's been going on in this camp we just got to make sure that we're ready to go uh, in another nine days from now where we can play as one and everybody can be pulling in the same direction some, some talk early or I guess it maybe was a week ago I can't remember at this point of which how many the two main quarterbacks mm -hmm. who had thrown one to throw in one, one interception and one to throw in three. Do you know, do you know the numbers off, offhand and who's thrown how many? Yeah, at this point, uh, one's thrown eight and one's thrown four at this point. And you have to sit down and you have to look at we We take it off if it bounces off a receiver's hand or batted at the line. But the decision interceptions, you know, and then there's also a statistic of balls in danger. How many balls have you thrown in danger that maybe weren't caught? You know, and so you've got to look at those statistics as well. Completion percentage, decision making, uh, taking sacks, understanding blitzes, hot reads. There's a lot of different variables that go into all of that. Yeah, t tomorrow or, or by Saturday, making the decision before they get out of here for camp is when I'd like to do it. I'd like to go through the scrimmage tomorrow and see how we perform. Um, with, with Tevin now full-time at, at wide receiver, how have you liked him adjusting to that new role? I, 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 I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Having that speed and athleticism out on the perimeter is, is something that we need as an offense, especially as Paul's been a little bit – 
nicked up and limited. And uh, Carlos had injured his knee and missed quite a bit of camp. And all of a sudden, you put his speed out there, and it makes a difference. He's still learning. I mean, he's he's been there 30 days. You know, you're playing against guys that have been playing in the secondary for four and five years. So I think he's going to be good. I don't think he's ready to go out there and play 70 plays as a wide receiver in a game like this. But I think he's getting better and better. And I would think by the middle of the year, he will be pretty polished out there and will be be able to make a major contribution to this football team as a receiver. But is he one of those guys to start off with, like you said, he's not going to be playing full time, but where you can have some specific plays for him or gadget type plays and, and utilize his speed? We, we will. I mean, yes. I mean, he's a guy that will have a package and what he knows. And that's how we started. We want you to learn these 10 plays. And then when you get those 10, then we'll go to 15 and 20. But that's kind of how we've started it at this point for him to play a role for us because of what he brings with his speed and athleticism, his ability to make some plays on the open space. He's been very receptive. I think, you know, a year ago, uh, probably a little hesitant and having to go learn a new position. But I think after the number of injuries he's had with an ACL, some shoulders, some ankles, a dislocated ankle, I mean, with what he's been through, you know, as light as he is at 160 pounds, I think he, he likes it a lot better out on the perimeter where he's not in there banging around like a pinball with 300 pound linemen. So, when did like the Who it was uh, probably like day three or four. I mean, very early in camp. I don't remember the exact day, and he was very receptive. I said, I'd like to put you out here and give you an opportunity to play a little more receiver. And he said, Coach, I've been running around with those big guys. I'm I'm all for it. I mean, so he's he's embraced it, and he's you know when when. The, if you move a player and he doesn't want to move, it's not going to be a win-win. But when they're willing to make the move and they want to make it and they'll get in it and learn it and do it with a great attitude, and he's done that and he's worked extremely hard. Was it predicated upon maybe Jared Kraft's stepping up and not playing like a freshman? Well, part of it is both him and uh, – uh, Walters, both both Kraft and Walters, the way both of those played, and and having Blake Martin playing the way that he is, and then having Kenneth Dixon, and having the depth there, because if you moved them and you're going to hurt yourself at running back, it doesn't help you as a football team. But I think what those guys have done, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're ahead of Tevin uh, coming in there at running back, but they both weigh 220 pounds, and they're much more ready to take that durability and that some of the pounding that they take inside as a running back.